Today, we're giving you some top 10 tips for tenants to help you have a successful relationship with your landlord and to help you have a good experience in your home. And so my first tip, um, and you're gonna hear me say this throughout, is everything should be in writing. Always do everything in writing. Even though you think your landlord knows, your rights don't come into play unless you put it in writing. And if you go to court, the court doesn't wanna hear about it unless it was in writing. So does a text message count? Well, a text message is a writing. However, the judge doesn't wanna look at your phone. And what happens if you lose your phone? You need to maybe send it in an email that you can print off later, because when you go to court, you need that writing to be on paper. And of course, the old fashioned way where you just write it down, sign it and date it, that's probably the best way. So my number nine tip is your landlord is responsible for keeping everything in proper working order. If you need repairs, your landlord must make those repairs within 14 days or faster in an emergency. If you're missing an essential service, such as water, gas, electricity, heat, or plumbing, the landlord is not addressing it quick enough, you can call the health department and ask them for assistance. But the landlord, remember, cannot be held responsible if you didn't put it in writing. And my number eight tip is, if your landlord refuses to fix things, you do not have the right to stop paying rent. Remember, you gotta put your request in writing, uh, and then your landlord needs a chance to fix the problem, but if it doesn't get fixed, your landlord is in violation of your lease, and you can move out. That's not very convenient, but after you move, you may be able to sue the landlord for breaking the lease. And my number seven tip is, you know, sometimes bad things happen and you're not able to pay your rent on time. When that happens, you need to talk to the landlord about your situation. The number one complaint that landlords give me as a tenant's rights attorney is that their tenants stop communicating with them. And once that relationship between you and your landlord sours, it's only a matter of time before an eviction is filed. If you can work out a payment plan with the landlord, that'll stop them from filing an eviction. Remember, get the agreement in writing. As long as you stick to the agreement, the landlord can't file an eviction. My number six tip has to do with fees. Sometimes landlords add fees to your bill and many tenants have been shocked at the amount of fees they were charged. Those fees are often illegal. In Oklahoma, a contract cannot contain penalties. That means that the landlord cannot charge you a fine for something you did or didn't do, such as your kids playing in the grass or your car having a flat tire, but that also includes late fees. Some late fees are allowed, but high late fees and daily late fees are not allowed. If you end up in court over fees, you should ask the judge to determine whether or not the fees were proper. A high late fee will get the judge's attention. If you're unsure about what you're being charged, ask your landlord for a ledger or accounting of the money you have paid and the amounts you have been charged. That's the best way for you to see what the actual cost of your apartment is. And it's an important piece of evidence if you end up in court. My next two tips are about your right to be free from harassment and abuse. So my number five tip is, your landlord must give you at least one day's notice before entering your unit. Now, there's an exception for emergencies, but otherwise your landlord is not allowed to enter your unit without permission. Furthermore, your landlord doesn't have the right to enter frequently. The landlord needs to give a legitimate reason for entering your unit. And that brings me to number four, your landlord is not allowed to lock you out of your unit or turn off your utilities without a court order. If your landlord locks you out or turns off your utilities without a court order, you have the right to sue the landlord for any damages it caused. You can also get a court order for the landlord to open the unit and turn on the utilities. If this happens to you, it is important that you talk to an attorney. My number three tip is about moving out. When you move out of an apartment, you need to do two things, a final walkthrough and demand your security deposit. First, the walkthrough. You need to document the state of your unit when you leave. This goes for moving into your next unit as well. You should ask the manager to conduct a walkthrough with you, but sometimes that's not possible. Regardless, you should take pictures or video of everything, especially drip pans, the refrigerator, the walls, the carpet, the toilet, the tub, and all the mini blinds. Don't keep the pictures on your phone. Email them to yourself and print them off. What happens if you lose your phone? And the second thing you need to do at move out is request your deposit. You have six months from the day you move to make a written request for your deposit. Even if you don't expect to get your deposit back, it is a good idea to ask for it. It forces the landlord to give you a final accounting that includes your charges and any damages they claim happened to the unit. And if you need to sue the landlord, you're going to need this important piece of evidence. If the worst happens and the court orders you to move out, 
you may have as little as two days to leave before the sheriff locks you out. It's important that you get your most important things together, especially medications and your important documents such as your birth certificate, social security card, and ID. If you get removed from the unit, you will only have 30 days to make arrangements to get your stuff. After that, the landlord can keep whatever is left behind. Furthermore, your landlord can make you pay everything you owe before you get your stuff. And while there's a few exceptions, it's best to just get important stuff out of the unit as soon as the 48 hour notice is posted. It's usually cheaper to rent a truck in storage space than it is to pay the landlord to get your things. And my number one most important tip, if you receive a court summons, you must go to court. If you don't go to court, you will lose and you must bring your evidence to court. The most frustrating thing for me as a tenant's rights lawyer is my client not bringing their things to court. It's important to keep all of your documents in a safe place. And if you end up in eviction court, you only have one court date and you need to have everything with you at that time. And that includes a copy of your lease, any notices posted to your door or served to you, payment ledgers, receipts, pictures, and anything else that proves your case. It's important that you print the pictures and emails because the court will not look at your phone. Never be afraid to go to court. We have a team of attorneys ready to help you at no cost to you, so there's no reason to not go.